The topic of this video is bash initialization files and the logout file. First, I'm going to talk about how bash starts. First, the terminal app is opened and that starts a new terminal session. The terminal app logs you in and starts up bash. The first configuration file that bash reads is the etsy forward slash profile file. That one it loads the defaults for all users. Then after that it looks for the following files in this order and runs the first one it finds. First it looks for a bash profile, then a bash login, then a profile, then a login. And all these start with a dot. They're all hidden files. Usually the first one it finds is dash profile and there's an underscore there. And it just reads that one and doesn't look for the other ones after that. The other ones are mostly for backwards compatibility. Dot bash underscore profile in my home directory is the one I have and it's the only one I've modified so far. But after learning the things that I'm about to tell you about, I've made some changes. Originally, my bash profile only had some commands to change the prompt and um, some commands that npm had put in there when I was using node. But for the sake of what I'm about to do, I removed the lines that changed the prompt. Like I said, the terminal after it, you open it, one of the things it does is it starts the first instance of bash that you're going to encounter. And that's commonly called the login shell. Any time you run bash after that login shell, it's called a sh subshell. So the first one is a login shell and all the other ones are subshells. The important thing I want you to focus on is that there's a difference between the login shell and the subshell. And I'm about to tell you what that difference is. Whenever a subshell is open, the, the user who is me, my dot bash rc file is executed. So the login shell executes the bash profile and the subshells each time you start one executes the bash rc file. The default behavior or the way it works until you modify it is that dot bash profile only affects the login shell and the things or commands in the dot bash rc file only affect the subshells. There are tricks to alter this behavior so that we can have the same commands that affect you know, have them all affect our bash shells in the same way. There's also a bash resource file which would run when you log out. You would have to create it, but it would look for it, and if it finds it, it would use it. It's in the home directory of the user, and it's dot bash underscore logout. This file gets executed when the user logs out using the exit command. The main trick to accomplishing our goal is to put all the shell configuration in the bash rc file then run the bash rc from within the bash profile. Now I'm going to show my bash profile and point out the source line. All right, you see this section of code here? Basically what this does is it checks to see if the bash rc file exists and then it executes that file. Remember, these are not quote unquote configuration files. These are actually script files because they have commands that these commands get run and executed. Okay, so here I have my bash profile and within the bash profile, I am running the bash rc. I'll explain what all this other stuff is later. So this is the section I want you to focus on right now. Keeping in mind how this works, you know, the steps that happen in the sequence. You know that bash profile runs in the login shell. Okay, so it's going to execute all these lines in the beginning. And these lines are basically you're going to put some welcome and calendar and stuff. And then it's going to run the bash rc file. So... If you open another bash shell within the login shell or, or any time afterwards, a subshell, the commands at the beginning are not going to be executed. So this welcome and the calendar and all that stuff is not going to show up. Another thing to notice, okay, I didn't want to get into this, but the, the things that show up at the beginning here, okay, I'll, I'll just like go through them. Okay, first it enters a blank line as to give us some space and then it's going to say welcome and then it's going to put my username and then it's going to put a new line and then it's going to put an empty line. The new line basically just returns the cursor or, or entry point to the next line, but this echo is going to actually put, make it a blank line. Okay, and then it's going to write time and then give the time. And then it's going to put another blank line and then it's going to echo out a calendar. It's going to display a calendar for the current month. So that's what this output is going to do. Okay, the, the end option with echo just tells it not to put a new line character after the word welcome. So the username will be right after the word welcome space. Okay, I'm going to show you what this actually looks like when it runs. Okay, I'm going to close this window and I'm going to open a new terminal. Okay, so right now we're in the login shell. 
So it ran the bash profile, and these are the things that I was telling you about that would show up. After it ran the bash profile, which ends about here, okay, then it ran the bash RC file, which is telling it to print out this. And I'll show you what my bash RC file looks like. Okay, this is my bash RC file. It basically gives the uptime. There is one thing which I was going to forget to show you. Okay, you see here, this is the th stuff that shows up when I open a new terminal and it runs the bash profile file because this is the login shell. I want to show you what happens when I open a subshell. Okay, I'm going to type, I'm going to type bash and I'm going to run it. Okay, notice that when you, okay, this is what happens when you run a subshell. It runs the bash RC file. It doesn't run the bash profile. Therefore, it doesn't show you all, all of this stuff. Okay? It shows you what would usually show up when you run a bash RC file. And it shows it to you right here. Okay? And notice, by the way, that the prompt looks different. Okay, the prompt up here looks like this. And I think that has something to do with the, the global configuration file. I'll be changing all of that later on in another video. All right, so that's it now for the files, or you can call them scripts, which affect the environment that you're working in at the terminal. First, there's the, the login shell, and then there can be subshells. And they are affected differently by these different scripts or configuration files. And there's also a hidden file, which is bash underscore logout, in case you want to run some commands when the user types exit to end his login session.